In the previous video, we defined the rate of reaction for a given reaction whose uh, balanced chemical equation is up here. And we defined this as 1 divided by volume times the time derivative of the extent of reaction. And we can calculate this value by taking a given chemical species in the, in the uh, reaction, divide by its stoichiometric coefficient, and then multiply by its, the time derivative of its concentration, so how its concentration changes over time. And that depends on whether or not it's a reactant or a product, whether or not the sign is positive or negative. Okay, so what other factors control what this rate of reaction is? Uh, we want to be able to kind of get some insight into what factors control that. So what we have is a rate law, which is empirically determined for every different reaction. So if we have a reaction like this, where we have reactants A and reactants B, um, we have a function which depends on the concentration of both A and B at a given time. So our rate of reaction here is going to be some constant K, called the rate constant, times the concentration of A, its molarity, its number of moles per liter, to some power, MA, and MA is not necessarily equal to nu A. It could be bigger, it could be smaller, it could be zero, who knows. And then the other reactant B to some power MB. And this would be true for any given reactant. There's going to be some value here um, of its concentration to a given power. Okay, so I'm going to label some of the parts of this that I just said. So we have V of T, the reaction rate, reaction velocity, you might call it, who knows. And then B, the molarity of reactant B. And you have this K value, which is called the rate constant, which is a very important value for chemical kinetics, determining how fast a reaction occurs. And then you have um, this kind of exponent here, which is called the order in A, the rate order. And then this value over here would be the order in B. And of course, this is the con this is the molarity of A. I just didn't label that because it's getting kind of crowded down there. And then this overall is all called the rate law. It is the equa the equation which determines what our reaction rate is. Okay, so all of that. Let's talk about some more facts uh, about here. So M A does not necessarily equal uh, the stoichiometric coefficient of A. Uh, a lot of times it is, a lot of times it isn't. It just, it just depends. And MB similarly does not necessarily equal nu B. So this, these powers are not uh, related to the stoichiometric coefficients as they would be in equilibrium. It just have, you'd have to determine empirically uh, what these values are for M, M, A, and M, B. And by determined empirically, I just mean that you have to do the experiment and do the calculation and see what it ends up coming out to be. You don't, you, there's no way to know beforehand until you do the experiment. Okay, um, <clears throat> some other things about this. So M, A, and M, B, they are usually integers. So they usually have values like one, 0, 1, 2, etc. And in fact, they're usually either 0, 1, or 2. Um, so, and they're always greater than 0. Greater than or equal to 0. They can be 0, definitely. You could, have a re you could have a reaction rate which doesn't depend on the concentration of B, or it doesn't depend on the concentration of A, etc. Um, then some terminology that we would use based off of what these values of MA and MB are, what these exponents are. Things you might say that you might say that the reaction is <clears throat> MA order in A. So if, if MA is zero, you'd say the reaction is zeroth order in A. If it's one, you'd say the reaction is first order in A. If it's two, you'd say the reaction is second order in A, etc. 
You'd also say that the reaction is MB order in B. So that makes sense as well. That's a completely analogous statement. And then you'd say that the reaction is the sum of those and the sum of whatever other reactants that you have and all of their whatever powers those reactions have in the rate law. So MA plus MB um, order overall. So if <clears throat> MA is 0 and MB is 1, the reaction will be first order overall. If, they're, if this is 1 and this is 1, the reaction is second order overall. If this is 1 and this is 4, the reaction will be fifth, over, fifth order overall, etc. You see how that goes. Um, usually, as I said, it's usually 0, first, or second order. Okay, and um, the units of V of T, as I've mentioned before, but I just want to mention again, because it's worth noting again, are units of mole per liter per second, which is equal to molarity per second. And we also know that the concentration of all of these <clears throat> individual species here, like concentration of a chemical, given chemical species, we know that that is in molar. So this rate constant here, this is a very uh, important value and is specific to any given reaction you have. Once you empirically determine the rate law, you have a given rate constant, and that is indeed a constant for this reaction. It doesn't uh, it depends on temperature, but it doesn't depend on the concentrations of A or B. And I can make a table here of some values. Um, so value the units of K and the order. So if our reaction is zero order, first order, or second order, um, the two sides of this equation have to have equal units. So this side, as we saw, is molarity per second. So if your reaction is zero order, then this is zero and this is zero, so this has to be in molar per second. Um, if it's first order, then molar per second equals, and you have one molar over here, so your K is in per second, so one over second or per second. And if it's second order, you have a molar squared over here, and you have a molar per second over here, so you have to cancel out one of those molars. So you have to be uh, one over molar, one over seconds, or per molar per second in order to get those units to even out. So one over molar or per molar per second. So those are some things to keep in mind that as the order changes for the reaction, for the overall reaction, our rate constant has different units and has a slightly different meaning uh, for what it's going to tell us about the reaction. And we'll explore some more consequences of that uh, a little bit further down the road.